Welcome back to my channel. My name is Satyajit Patnaik. For those who are new to this channel, let me tell you that I have 14 years of industrial experience and I do videos on data and AI. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe it. Let's jump into this video. Hi, welcome back. Let's try to talk a little bit more about responsible AI. Well, responsible AI involves ensuring that our AI systems are ethical, they are transparent, fair and secure while mitigating risks like bias, uh, intellectual property misuse or misinformation or privacy breaches, right? Now, let's try to take two different scenarios. In two different scenarios, we will try to talk about a use case. Let's say I will write down scenario one and I will write down scenario two. Simple. Now, let's say what is the use case? The use case is we met a company. Let's say the company's name is Novatech. Now, Novatech wants to build a chatbot. Okay, and they want to build a rag based chatbot. Okay, now for those who are complete beginners, uh, might not understand what rag is. Well, rag is retrieval augmented generation. Now, more details about rag will be studied in the advanced lectures of generative AI. So, you will pretty much understand how rags work and why do we use rags and why why do we have most of the use cases right now that are productionized in various companies are rag based uh, models or rag based generative ai solutions right so rag is pretty much a very very important concept okay forget about it let's say novatech is providing us some files right the files could be pdf files it could be doc files it could be any format files Eventually, we need to extract this information and using a rag pipeline, we create a chatbot. So whenever a user comes in, let's say the user comes in and the user is coming to the chatbot. The user is asking a question. The chatbot will be able to give a response or an answer from this particular document. That's the use case, right? Now, as an AI expert, I'm going to give two different solutions to the client, right? So let's say my first solution is basically a cloud approach. So I'm going to tell the, uh, tell the client that we will be storing all of this information, let's say in AWS S3. We will be taking a high end EC2 instance for deployment. And let's say we will be using AWS Bedrock for the generative AI large language model APIs. And let's say we will be using few other AWS services like Redshift or something, right? So the first one is pretty much a cloud-based rag chatbot on AWS. So now for those who are complete beginners, they don't know what these services are. Just pretty much go to the web and you should be able to get what these services does, right? Or else simply you can create an AWS account, which takes hardly a few minutes. And once you are here, you can pretty much go to their individual pages. You will be able to understand what these services are, right? Let's say Bedrock. If you go to Bedrock, Bedrock is basically the easiest way to build and scale generative AI applications. So using Bedrock, you can pretty much get started with any um, APIs or models that are available in Bedrock. So let's say you can see Anthropic Cloud models are available and then DeepSeek is available. And let's say Amazon's Nova Pro models are available. And then IBM Data and AI models are available. Uh, Mistral is available. NVIDIA, some of the models are also available, right? So you can quickly just enable these services and get started with it, right? So this is my first solution to the client. My second solution is pretty much a 
uh, on premises approach where i will be telling that uh, sir we will be using like a physical large language model so instead of bedrock we will be using an open source llm so i'm just writing down as open source llm let's say llama for an example and for storage let's say we will use a local server right local server for storage now whatever options you choose your responsibility as a developer or as a team leader who is taking a call on creating such application should always be focusing on the responsible ai part that means you should create all of these models or all of these applications in such a way that we are ensuring that the systems that we are going to create are going to be ethical are going to be transparent fair secure etc etc while mitigating risks like bias misuse and etc etc right so how can we implement responsible ai concepts in these type of scenarios let's say we'll talk about scenario one first okay so let me also draw a simple line let's say i'm just drawing a simple line even though it's an arrow which is fine let's say we draw a simple line and then let's say now how do we get started with responsible ai let's try to understand that the first thing is data privacy and security now let's say we are going to store all the files in the aws s3 aws s3 is basically like your bucket where you can store different files okay i mean what is a bucket meant for traditionally we use bucket to carry water right similarly aws s3 is a bucket to carry the files so whenever you are configuring the s3 we can configure the s3 buckets with some sort of encryption for data uh, we can use iam rules so the first one could be implementing iam rules to it of course with least privileges for ec2 instance to access s3 ensuring only necessary permissions are granted okay so i am roles plus bucket level bucket level policies so aws experts can be reached out to implement these things but i mean if you are somebody who knows about aws products you can easily implement it by yourself as well the second part could be like data transmission like using https for api calls to bedrock right we will be calling bedrock through boto3 client usually we use boto3 client so it's always recommended to use a https call which basically means https is more secure right as compared to http to encrypt data in transit we can also implement some vpc endpoints if the chatbot pro uh, processes uh, personal data right there could be personal data in your documents then in that case we can ensure that some of the regulations like gdpr or ccpa is also we are in compliance with them okay so third thing that you can also do is we can enable aws cloud trail so cloud trail is again another aws service we can enable it to log all the s3 and bedrock api activities for auditing purpose because auditing is very much needed similarly for fairness and all we can also implement some data quality checks we can do some audit training or context documents uh, to check some of the offensive languages or we can check skewness in the data are we more focused on uh, do we have cultural biases or do we have gender biases or do we have some model biases let's say i don't know i'm just giving an example let's say one of the bedrock models nova pro is little bit biased and it's biased towards a certain category of people then we should always get rid of using that right so in a nutshell what i'm trying to say is there are multiple exercises that we can actually do in order to 
have a responsible AI things implemented in our generative AI case studies. Okay, so in this case, let's say a user is going to ask a question, right? What are the benefits of renewable energy? And that answer is pretty much in one of these documents and you are able to get the information, right? So we need to make sure that our S3 documents are sourced from credible and uh, credible and uh, basically this will be provided by the company right so it's by default is credible but let's say there are some use cases where you are scraping information from the internet then you should make sure that the sources are credible right uh, we bedrocks guardrails filters out any toxic language in the response as well we should always log the query uh, retrieve documents and response in CloudWatch so we can also enable CloudWatch and if the response is flagged as biased example overly favoring one energy type the AI officer or the AI engineer or the one who is preparing this model can basically review the S3 documents and update the data set so all of these things needs to be aligned with of course these things we usually don't implement while working on a proof of concept but let's say we are moving from a proof of concept to a greenfield project or to a new project then definitely we should take care of all of these things now coming back to the scenario two similar to what we understood in scenario one it's just that the tools will be different because here we were mostly using some of the aws tools like aws iam roles aws bucket level policies AWS cloud trail etc etc now here how do we make sure as our files are mostly in our storage device usually if you are falling in this category assuming that you have your company's own storage so I don't think a lot of a um, lot of such policies are required because eventually your storage is your own server but if you want you can always encrypt your files on the server using tools like uh, let's say <coughs> lukes for linux or bitlocker for windows we can always restrict the users to get a direct access to the server and we can implement rbacs rbacs basically means role based access control or we can also implement a multi-layer authentication we can always have like since the large language model also is going to be run on your local machine right we can always ensure that the internal network traffic is encrypted we can use a firewall to limit external access to the server and so multiple other things can also be done but i hope you got an idea on what exactly your yeah, guardrails can also be implemented like here we were using cloud trial here we can use some open source uh, open source tools uh, well I'm not able to get um, Datadog is not open source right it's paid um, no not Datadog so there, there definitely must be some open source alternative of cloud trail we can google it out but this is what the final picture is right Whenever we are implementing a generative AI solution or an AI solution or an agentic AI solution, we should always make sure that we are implementing all the responsible AI checks, ensuring local files are diverse, credible, using a content moderation tool. Let's say there are some toxic elements in the document. There are some ways to detoxify it, to filter the uh, documents and to filter the large language models response we can log the query retrieved files and response in a local database for traceability we can also have something like let's say in your chatbot right um, let's say in your chatbot let's say the user is coming to the chatbot and let's say the user is asking a question right and let's say the response is somehow biased now we can also give an option directly in the chat let's say this is your chat window and the AI has written down something 
and this is your box where you can actually write down something let's say you can give an option here that plus one if you think the response is biased that you can do so if you do that when the user is doing it the developer will be able to understand yeah some of these responses are getting biased so we will immediately take down this application again go back to basics try to de detoxify change the training data change the rules and policies and etc and then again come back right so these are two different aspects of responsible ai i hope that you are able to understand this uh, we have given two different examples so that you can understand the cloud part and also the on-premises part see you in the next video